cellulitis and how to bring more circulation to the legs. Oh, Ashley, is, Ashley is to the point. <laughs> okay. Well, she I, knows what she wants. I have a lot to say about cellulitis. <laughs> so um, we should probably define it first. Okay. And not to be confused with cellulite. Yes. Okay. Yes. So <laughs> cellulitis, I mean, the itis gives it away. It's inflammation. Yeah. Right. It's, and it's specifically, it's um, under the skin and sort of between the skin and the next layer, which is... Um, fatty tissue and, and, and connective tissue. Mm -hmm. And it's sort of, it's a deep-seated um, infection. And usually in horses, it's uh, legs, it's hind legs, and it's one hind leg. And it's in about, ha only in about half the cases do we know what caused it. But when of we- course. When, horses. <laughs> hey, half is good. When we, when we do know, it's from like a wound, an injury, a break in the skin, could be like a, there was a surgery and it just allowed bacteria mm. to go in, but it is a bacterial infection. And um, the thing about cellulitis is one day your horse is totally fine, and the next day he's three-legged lame, the leg is blown I was say, up. Usually. We call it like a stovepipe leg from because from the hoof to could be the hog or knee could be higher. It is like one thing. It's excruciatingly painful, oh. like to the touch, but also to stand and move on. Um, so it, it would be an emergency because y you don't know that it's cellulitis and even your vet looking at it is not going to know. So they might do some imaging, they might do some blood work to make sure that your horse, um, to see if there's an infection going on, to see if it's a local infection or to see if it's a body-wide infection because this all tells them how to treat it. If, if everything points to cellulitis, then um, we do try to find out what the cause is because you have to get rid of that. But um, aggressive antibiotics, say, yeah. yeah, and then painkillers, pain relief, and anti-inflammatory, so non-steroidals like your your butes and vandamines and um, fibrocoxib, which is Equiox, and and it comes down pretty quick. Now the things that the owner is going to have to do is um, uh, cold hosing or icing. I was just going to say, yeah. it sounds like you're going to be spending some time cold oh, hosing. Oh yeah, and you you know you would like to use something like a, a game ready or an ice horse that has the cold and compression, but it's so painful, you're not going to be able to do that right away. Well, that's just, just going to ask, like, as far as, like, poulticing or things of that nature to help. No, but you don't want to touch anything. Open. Yeah. It might be open. And the other thing is, when the body swells, skin has only so much, like, ex room to expand. Elasticity. Yeah. Ooh, that's a big word. I tried. Um, <laughs> and it, when it swells more than it has elasticity for it, there can be like microscopic breaks in the skin, mm. and then you'll see a, a yellowish, the serum of the blood is oozing out, and it even gets crusty. So you don't want to put a poultice on it. You don't want to put a liniment. You don't want to put anything on it. Um, you let the antibiotics do the work, let the non-steroidals, the, the cold hosing or icing. You, you will eventually be able to bandage it. Bandaging mm -hmm. and, and, and application of cold are tremendous for it. There are things you may have to do well beyond the medication and even because when a horse has a cellulitis in a leg, that leg is more susceptible to it in the future. Oh really? Yeah, because... Even if you get rid of the infection? Yeah, because you have stretched all the tissues, mm. maybe created scar tissue, you you may be, that the, and I say you, it's not your fault, um, the circulation is impaired, the lymph drainage doesn't work properly anymore. And so you have to be in the future to prevent it. I mean, there's things you can do, you closely monitor the legs. So you have to every day be looking mm -hmm. for cuts, breaks, scabs, abrasions. You can't let your horse get scratches. Okay. And turnout is great because when they're in a stall, they swell up. So you want a little movement. But. You don't want to turn them out early in the morning when there's wet grass because you want to avoid that leg getting wet. You can't put it in, you can't turn out when it's muddy or sloppy. The fun parts of horse ownership. Oh my goodness, so I don't mean to be discouraging, but, but there is quite a bit of care in the moment and then afterwards. So that's good to know though, because a lot of times when 
the horse owners do go down, they see that the horse's leg is swelled up. A lot of times, even if it you know if it's just the hock and it doesn't seem like super dramatic, they do want to like wrap or do something like that to kind of get the compression down. Yeah, but the at horse this point, will tell you. The yes. horse, it's so painful. So at this to, point, it's to, like get the vet out, make sure it's because the horse probably isn't going to be bearing weight, and so you'll you won't know that it's a cellulitis unless you've been through this with this horse. Um, you don't know if it's. I mean, this looks as bad as a fracture. Oh, so it's, oh yeah, yeah, it's three-legged lame. It, it could be an abscess. Um, there's a couple things that make horses joint infection. Mm -hmm. When your joints get infected, the horse is three-legged, like non-weight bearing. So you've got, this is an emergency, not only to make sure it's not one of those things, but you've got to get therapy started right away. And get ahead of the infection. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So then with the, her follow-up question of how to bring more circulation to the legs, turnouts okay, hand walking, I'm assuming. Yeah, exercise is really good to keep things moving. Uh, as little, like I don't keep my horse in a stall, not for this reason, but for others. So if you can find a situation where the horse is not in a stall at night, like it's a run in, run out, mm -hmm. um, that would be ideal. Because when they're stabled and standing still, that leg is just gonna stock up. Trailering even mm. um, will cause them to stock up. So, And you also wanna protect the leg. So when you trailer, you'll wanna for sure, if you didn't before, use shipping boots or, or wraps, however you want to do it. This may be a horse that you now wrap when you exercise mm -hmm. because it can't have a, a bump or boo-boo because then it's going to set get the cycle going again. <sighs> I know. But it sounds like, though, if you get ahead of it, there's mm -hmm. at least hope for you to have some treatment yeah. and management. Yeah. yeah. Okay, we don't want to scare people too much. <laughs> well, I, should, I want to add that it, it, is, it can be life-threatening, but that's why you call your vet right away and you get on top of it. Instantly, okay. And there are treatments, yeah. Well, that is definitely great to know okay. and keep us posted of how your horse is doing for sure. Sorry.